Okay, so we're gonna, we're, we're not gonna behave any differently. I'm still gonna ask you, I'm still gonna be obnoxious. Let's all be recorded right now. I have a problem with being obnoxious. Section 1.7, combination of functions. Yeah, I just tell you my name is Miss Cheetah. Mm -hmm. Please don't fret, it's really for your benefit. So um, section 1.7, combination of functions, and it's also composite of functions. What I left you yesterday was combination, and that's what you learned last year. You never learned composite in Algebra 2 Common Core. So that will be the new piece, but I'm not teaching that new piece today. That'll be tomorrow. Today, in this short period, I'm gonna do combination, which is what your homework was, but I will also address what I told you not to do about the domain. I, we didn't do a lot about the domain last year. So I'm actually gonna start with that first. Um, in fact, let me write down all of the homework assignment. So it's one through 29 odd, 31 through 48. This is where you started every third one. And I had to skip the one through 29 odd because that's where you're first just practicing about domain. So finding the domain of a function. That's what we're going to do first. And how are we going to do that? Algebraically. Which is harder than graphically. Graphically can go like, oh, I use those x values and those x values. That's my domain. Well, now I have to do it algebraically. All right, I'm just going to uh, write down a function. 3x squared minus 4, what kind of function is that? What will that sketch out to be? A parabola, it's a quadratic. Is there any values I cannot put in for x? Is there anything that I can't put in? Can I put in a 3? Yeah. A 0? Yeah. A 5? Yeah. A negative 100? Yeah. Is there anything I can't put in? Yeah. No, so I guess that domain would be all real numbers, right? There's nothing I'm going to exclude. Well, that's pretty boring. Put that a little bit higher so you can see it. Well, now I have some kind of rational function. Um, let's just try. I'll just spit out some values. Um, can I can I put a one? Yeah, um, can I put in a zero? Why? Oh, so those are, that's something I have to look for then. I can't have a fraction that has a zero. I, I mean, I can have that, right? Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. I mean, that just equals zero. But I can't have some number that's called, what did you call it again? Undefined. Okay, so I can't have that. So that means when there's, a, when there's a fraction or rational function here, I need to only focus on the denominator. So I guess I'm just going to set this equal to zero, see what x makes it go to zero. Oh, that's right, it's zero. Let me, let me try another one of those since you found that already. What number can I not use? Two. Two. What other number can I not Negative use? Two. Negative two. Because if I think about it in factored form, I don't care about the numerator, I only care about the denominator. Those are the two values I cannot use because I'll make my denominator go to zero and that's undefined. I can't graph that. Ah, okay. So those I would exclude. So this one here, the domain, well, I jump over those two. Negative infinity to negative two, jump negative two to two, jump two to positive infinity. Because those are the directions is to find the domain. In other words, which values can I not use? I must skip over them. 
So if I go back up to this one, its domain I could not use zero. Negative infinity to zero, oops, skip, zero to positive infinity. Okay, so you found something for me. When, when there's a fraction or a rational function, I have to study the denominator. See if there's a value you can put in for x to make it go to zero. I cannot use that. Let's try something else. <clears throat> Let's just go with that parent function that we've already studied. What is my domain that you've already studied this year? What am I allowed to use? Zero. Zero? Zero to infinity. Zero and all positive numbers, right? Just nothing negative. So in other words, in other words, what you're telling me is underneath the square root, it has to be um, zero or greater. Is that what you're saying? Underneath, whatever this stuff is, it, it, it needs to end up being zero or greater, correct? I can take the square root of zero and anything greater than zero, correct? So to find out what values I may not use in my domain, I'm going to take the stuff underneath, and you told me it must be greater than or equal to a zero. That's what you said. That's what it must be. Those are my domain values. Well, wait, let me solve. What are my domain values? Let me subtract four. Oh, so I can use negative four. Let's go back up here. May I use negative four for x? Because it gives me my zero, right? Mm -hmm. And then, let's see, greater than. I can use negative three. Well, right, that would be a positive one, right? And so again, what you told me is that underneath the square root, all of that must be greater than or equal to a zero. That's how I set it up. The stuff underneath must be greater than or equal to zero. And that two is an incidental. I do not care. It does not bother my problem. So what is my domain? Well, it's negative four and everything larger. I may use negative four because I see the equal to and everything larger. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with your brain. More. Now I'm gonna put those two things that you've told me so far together. You told me that I cannot have zero in the denominator. The second thing you told me that if I see a square root, that that stuff inside can be equal to zero or anything greater. You said two things. So as I look at this, I see a fraction. I'm going to focus on the denominator. As I focus on the denominator, how do you think I'm going to do this? If someone had to guess, guess. Is the two a problem? No. It's the stuff underneath, right? Yes. What must the stuff underneath be? What must it be? May it be zero? It may only be now greater than zero. Because in this position, I may have zero. Zero is a number. Here in the denominator position, I may not have the stuff underneath be zero. It must be greater than zero. Because if this is zero, zero times two is zero. That becomes undefined again, right? Okay? So now when I see the square root in the denominator position, I do not do the equal to. So I'm still going to go ahead and subtract 4 from both sides. And so my domain, that just means I put my parenthesis. I'm not allowed to touch negative 4, but it's still everything greater. Very, very similar. If you don't get something you need to ask, you can't fret about the recording. Okay, you have to get comfortable. Is there, is there anything you want to ask me? Where did that come from? Why'd you do it? Can you say it again? You talk too fast. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, I don't care about the talk too fast. Go home and watch me again. I'm slow. Yes? Why, why pick negative four? I can't do any Ah, uh, because 
I said that the stuff underneath had to be now greater than zero because I'm going to take the square root of it because I can't have zero. So I put this stuff here and I say it has to be greater than zero. Now I need to solve for x. These are the x's I'm allowed to use. That's my domain. So my x's are greater than negative four, but it doesn't have the equal to. So that's why I put the open parenthesis. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. I'm going to change this. Okay, let's do some problems. I'm going to give you a few seconds. See if you can figure out what values you cannot use and then tell me what the domain is on your paper. Do that on your notes. You should get something like that. So I let you start, and then I come in behind you, and I'll write it up there so you can confirm your work. So what I do is I know to only focus on the denominator. I don't see any square roots. I factor it so I can find this quite easily, set it equal to zero. Whatever those values are, I may not use them. I really can't use those, so I skip them. Everything else, I can make a T-table and get you outputs. I went through the problem like I've just told you to do. I said only focus on the denominator. I did that. So they can't use negative three, so I skipped over and I said, there's your answer. But then as I looked at the problem, I noticed that there was something else. I could, not that I care, I could factor out the numerator. I can even cancel out numerator and denominator. I'm really just left with x minus three. My domain is still this. It's not about after you simplify, if you make it go away. It's like, no, 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 now I can use it. And you have to look at the beginning without any factoring at all. You leave it alone, don't touch it, and go right to the denominator. I understand it does go away, and you're going to learn about that in Chapter 2. Oh, because you learned a little bit about it last year, and I'm going to take it further this year. Again, it's all about the domain. Next, let's do some more and some with some square roots. Please go ahead and figure out what that domain would be. What x values am I allowed to use?
Yes, ma'am. Um, when you put X on the greater or equal to two, why would it be equal to three? But it's not a denominator. Oh. It'll just be a number zero, and that's allowed. Thank you. That was a great question. Any other questions you might have? Yes. How do you know if it's equal to to zero or to two? Oh, because it's only in denominators. I can't have a zero, but in in just you know just the blue line on your paper, I can have a number zero. That's allowed. That's a number on a number line. So when it's at the bottom, you have to have it with not yeah, equal to. Yeah. Yeah. Because I can't have zero in the bottom. So at the top, just like that, it's equal to. Yep. Sorry, that is a square root. That's what I got. Because in the denominator, I may not have a zero. So I can't say and also equal to zero. So that just means I do not use the square bracket because I may not use the value negative two. I use negative two, I'll get one over zero. Can't use it. Have all that down? Does that seem okay? Because I'm, I'm going to like do something else now. Okie dokie. Oh, okay, yes, go ahead. Okay. What I don't get is like, what on, like, on some of the uh, problems you can put, like, like, why can't you put negative infinity to negative two? Um, why can't I put like negative infinity up till two? Yeah. Like, like this? Right? I'm sorry, up to negative two? Let's test one. Let's pick negative three. Can't have negative one underneath the square root. That produces complex or imaginary numbers that we learned about yes last year. Okay. That was a great question because I can tell a lot of people didn't remember that either. Thank you. Do you remember when you were graphing this last week on the parent function, the square root of x? You knew not you couldn't use any negatives. Same thing here. It's the same thing. I'm just not graphing it. I can't use negatives underneath. That's why I'm saying it has to be bigger than a zero. That's what it has to be. It has to be positive. That's how I say it has to be positive. You're asking me great questions. Thank you. So, so we found the person who's brave enough to always ask you just pass notes across the room, right? Okay, so I'm going to turn this. So it's a funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> she, she's asking great questions. I know you've got that question, too. I can see the look. You're not like, I know this. You're like, yeah, what is that? I have that in my head, too. So I'm going to always call this a complex fraction. That's more than just seeing this as the function. It's I could make five a, a fraction two, five over one over another fraction. So it's like a fraction over a fraction. They call those complex fractions. Still the same question. What's my domain? So what I actually do is I find out what I cannot use. So I'm only going to function. Here's here's my large fraction line. I am going to function. I'm going to focus on this denominator. 
Well, in me focusing on this denominator, I'm going to first focus on this denominator. What already can I not use? So I'm going to come over here to the side and tell myself I cannot use zero. I already have to skip it. So now I'm going to go back to this large one here, and I'm going to um, solve. I'm going to set that equal to zero. See what x that is? If it's something different than zero, then I found something else I'm not allowed to use, right? Because if it, if it would have said 5 over x plus 1, didn't you set your denominator equal to zero? Whatever you solve for, you said I cannot use. It hasn't changed. I just had to look at this denominator first and come over here and write this down. Keep a list. Now I'm setting this whole thing equal to zero. Well, now I just add one to both sides. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by x. What else can I not use? Let's take a look at that. Let's put 4 here. 4 over 4 is 1. 1 minus 1 is, oh, 0. Oh. So I, ooh, I have two values I may not use. I can go from negative infinity, my first one is going to be 0, skip, and go to 4, skip. I will give you a couple more to practice, just in case you're saying I'm barely hanging on, I think I kind of sort of get you. Do it again. I'm just asking what x values am I allowed to use? In other words, what's my domain? So the way I'm going to focus is I'm going to focus what I cannot use. So I know my problem is a denominator here, but I see within this denominator I have another fraction, so I'm going to focus on this one first. What may I not use? Two. So I'm going to tell myself I already cannot use two. I'm going to go to this whole entire denominator. I'm going to set it equal to zero and see what x I might get there. So let's see. I'm going to add one to both sides. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 2 to get that out of the denominator position. Hopefully that algebra, you're able to understand what I'm doing. I just want x out of the denominator. So I have to multiply by this. So I can cancel. 1 times this is just this. And you can go home and re-watch me over and over again. Add 2 to both sides. Oh, I just found my second one. <laughs> but, but let me try it again. Let me try. Let's put 6 in here. 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 over 4 is 1. 1 minus 1, oh. That's how I got that. So now I'm going to write up my domain properly. Negative infinity. Teachers, for first, fourth period, please do not release students at this time. This was the tardy bell for second, fourth. Wait for the bell to release students to second lunch. Thank you. We need better bells. We get out of 2,500. 23 is what I have. So that tells me eight more minutes. Okay. Okay, so did you get this? You okay? Yes. Sure. 
May I? No, no. I, I, that was good. It's okay. It's good. It's good. Wait, Miss Gia, on the graph, would that be like the little white surface, or how would it look on the graph? Um, yeah, okay, we'll get there. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to rework the frac. I'll have to rework this in order to tell you that. Um, um, these I cannot use, so they're either holes or they're vertical asymptotes. Right now, I couldn't tell you without me reworking this for a moment. Okay, so we'll worry about that chapter two. So I cannot use them, though. They're not my table of value, ever. Look at this guy. He's got two issues. Number one, denominator. What can I not use in my denominator? So I already know this way, right? I cannot use them. But I must focus this time on my numerator because why? What's in my numerator? Square root. That x plus 6 is what? What can that stuff underneath be? That's right. Greater than or equal to zero. I may have zero in the numerator position of a fraction. Let's see what it says. I'm going to subtract six. So let's just, I got these two different looking things. Let me just take out a quick number line here. Negative seven, negative six, negative five, negative four. That's enough. So this one here tells me um, negative 6, including negative 6 and greater. Correct? Mm -hmm. This one says I cannot use a negative 5. Right? So now let me write that domain up. I just wrote what I, I did here. I had two things, always a denominator. I cannot use that. But in my numerator, I had a square root. I can't have negative numbers underneath that. So I said x plus 6, but it could be 0, greater than or equal to 0. So I had to sketch it out to determine how does this look. Once I saw how it looked, then I just wrote up what I saw. Um, when there's an equal to, when I'm allowed to use that value. This one says um, x could be equal to a negative 6. That means I'm allowed to. If I didn't have the equal to, that means I can only get close to it but never touch it. Thank you. Great questions. I have now three minutes to cover what was for you to do yesterday. This is all just domain. I think you can handle it. I think yesterday you're okay. I'm just going to, again, it's on the video, right? Combination of functions, this is what you saw yesterday, right? It was asking you this in the directions, okay? So this means this. This is the, this is the new name. This is the how to do it. If it says to do add f and g together, how do you do that? Well, you take that function, you add the second function. If it wants you to subtract, that's its new name. How do you do it? You take the first, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You did this last year. So when it says this, you must write this, you must write this, and then substitute. Let me show you. I have some examples below to show you how I want you to write it. I'm sorry that I'm, I'm going a little fast right here but I know you all know how to use YouTube. Here's F and here's G. If it asks me in my homework to do this, like it asked you, I then write that on the left. On the right tells me how to do it. Then I go ahead and I just substitute. I find F of X, I substitute it in. I find G of X, I substitute it in. Then I simplify and clean it up till I'm done. What I said yesterday is you do not have to worry about the second part of the directions, the domain. Oh, now you do because now you know how. That's just a boring parabola. There are no holes. I can use anything I want. Not an issue. There's no square roots. There's no denominator. So we. Yes. Like for 48, it's on square x, 
and then tell his brother. Um, how do, what do we do with that? How what I will do is I will actually answer those questions tomorrow. I will allow yesterday's homework to be combined with today's homework that will be due on Friday. So I will answer your questions tomorrow on it, okay? Oh, wait, let me, let me stop because we're done, right? <laughs>